Welcome back to the Invest Talk Classroom. I'm Justin Klein. And I'm Luke Guerrero. And today we're going to talk about investing in a recession. And the <sighs> big word. R word. Ooh, yeah, everyone cringes when they, they hear it and they're always looking out around the corner. You know, when is that next recession going to happen? And I think it's important to not paint every recession with a broad brush. I think a lot of people have a PTSD from 08. They think understandably, that, understandably, it was a tough time. Everyone, uh, you know, you're scarred by those, uh, those events that create emotions. And for a lot of people that created some emotions, whether that was loss in their portfolio, maybe loss of their job, maybe loss of their home. Mm -hmm. And they think that is a recession. No, that is a financial crisis, mm -hmm. right? So why don't we talk about what is a recession and what is a financial crisis? Yeah, I mean, you also have to remember that we're also on the heels of the COVID recession, too, yeah, right? Where true. unemployment skyrocketed over 10% in a yeah. matter of like a month and a half. Yeah. The S&P 500 was losing like 7 to 10% every day. It's, it was terrifying. So the last two things people have in their mind, understandably, are horrific moments. But that's just not how it is every single time, right? Mm -hmm. So first, we should probably define a recession. Yeah. And the technical definition, though this doesn't always turn out to be the case, is two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth, right? In reality, what it really is, is a recession is defined by a government panel declaring something a recession, right? Because yeah. more recently, we did have the technical definition of a recession, but unemployment was also at 3%. Yeah. And that's certainly not economic contraction, because yeah. as you you're, you're, you know, you want to talk about the difference between an inflationary recession, right? Which is what we kind of had before and a deflationary recession. Yeah. Like you said, we had a technical recession uh, last year, but it was very minor. Uh, and employment rate was very low. And, and that was what we call an inflationary recession. Remember, it's real GDP, not nominal. Nominal GDP oftentimes in a recession is still going up, meaning economic activity is still growing. But when you adjust it for inflation, it can be negative. And that is two quarters in a row. That is a recession. So it, it's it's vital to understand the difference. Um, and in if, if nominal GDP is going up, then typically earnings tend to stay relatively robust. Mm -hmm. And that's important for equity prices uh, overall, uh, because that's what it's all about. It's about what are corporations earning? They, the, the, the market doesn't care that much about whether we're in technically in a recession. No. They care more about what are corporate profits doing? And corporate profits in the last technical recession, they tend they continued higher. And so not every recession is accompanied by a massive drop in equity prices. What the S&P in 08 from 07 to the bottom in 09 was down about 56%, mm -hmm. peaked to peak the trough. But once again, that was a financial crisis. That was a deflationary recession, mm -hmm. right? When banks in general stopped, uh, stopped lending and prices across the economy, especially in the housing market, were in decline. That was a huge deflationary bust. And that's a big difference than what you've had uh, as of late. And, and I would argue with our debt situation, it's going to be hard for the Fed, the government to really allow that type of situation again because if if you have prices falling dramatically it's going to be very hard for us to pay back our debt so i think that the governments are going to kind of try to manufacture kind of consistent inflation i think they're going to want that um and that ultimately means that there will be recessions but they're probably going to be more often inflationary recessions yeah. than deflationary recessions. yeah because i mean if inflation's at nine percent right if our inflation's at six percent and gdp's it's at five and a half percent, mm -hmm. right? That's technically negative real GDP growth, but that's way different from inflation being at two and GDP being at 1.5, right? Yeah. Technically, in terms of the real value, it's exactly the same, but in reality, right? In nominal terms, the nominal world, which is what we live in, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's fundamentally different. So then the question becomes, how do you prepare uh, to invest in a recession, because even though things are drawing back, right, things aren't expanding like they have been. We're coming out of the largest expansion time, I think, in what the history of this country, right? Mm -hmm. You know, even though we're coming out of that, are there still opportunities to to make money, to invest wisely? And I think the answer is yes. And first and foremost, you know, I'll just give you an anecdote. I remember when I was a kid during 2008 and I was driving down, uh, you know, Highway 1, Pacific Coast Highway, and I see all these houses that had for sale signs up. And I thought to myself as a precocious youngin, you know, man, if only I could buy one of these houses. <laughs> and because that's that's a great thing though, right? Is if you have dry powder, if you have the ability to snag up assets, like this is an excellent time to do it because this is when everyone else is heading for the hills. Yep. And when people are heading for the hills, that's when you want to head, you know, right back into town. Exactly. Yeah. And now you have to keep an eye on uh, what sectors 
are, are going to do well and what aren't in, in, in uh, a recession. Obviously, they're, they're, we talked before about the financial sector and, and banks. Banks don't tend to do very well in a, in a, in a recession. Why? Is because the, their defaults, right? Default, higher default mm-hmm. rates on, on mortgages or uh, commercial properties, credit cards, et cetera. Um, there are obviously cyclical names like uh, in, in the d- discretionary field, right? Uh, companies that sell clothing or sell cars, they tend to have, uh, they have tough times in a recession. So uh, making sure that you're not overexposed to certain sectors that uh, are going to have shrinking, uh, shrinking earnings going forward, because it's not about what they earned last year when we weren't in a recession. It's about what they're going to earn in the next six, nine, 12 months when maybe we are in a recession. So uh, making sure that you are somewhat positioned defensively, but still have that eye to pick up the names that are thrown out, the baby with the bathwater type of analogy. There's a lot of those in recessionary times. Yeah. yeah. So I think that uh, about covers how to invest in a recession, how to think about whether we're in a inflationary recession, a deflationary recession, all of that matters to how you position your portfolio. For portfolio. So it's not a one size fits all. It's definitely uh, something that you have to gauge the type of environment that we're in. So if you want to learn more about that and whether we are going into a recession or maybe going out of a recession, you can tune in to Invest Talk every weekday from four to five Pacific time and call with your question at 888 99 chart.